Hey, what's up guys? Uh, we're here at the Filster HQ shop and I just received a very cool sample from our friends at uh, Index Fasteners. It's, uh, it's a sample sheet of their new uh, ATAX pattern and uh, already, you know, I'm just doing a, a little, uh, my first impressions out of the box. We're going to, you know, unbox it and uh, make a holster with it and I wanted to go over uh, some of my first uh, impressions of it. So first of all, um, I've seen a lot of different uh, camo prints and patterns and uh, methods for adhering it to the Kydex. And what I want to say immediately is that I'm very impressed by this one. Um, so first of all, what you can see is that it's really low gloss. And we have a couple other samples here from uh, some other folks with other patterns uh, that we can compare it to. First of all, it's extremely low gloss. And second of all, it's not like overlaid with some sort of film or adhesive or, or other uh, printing process. Apparently, from what I've been told, it's actually like a uh, image infusion into the Kydex, which, uh, first of all, keeps it from being, you know, glossy. Second of all, it helps keep the color correct in terms of, of what you expect. And third of all, what's really cool is that this is actually licensed from ATAX, so it's not like a, you know, uh, you know, super cam or multi-spam kind of kind of pattern that's sort of maybe uh, like a reproduction of what you actually want. This is ATAX, they paid to get it licensed, and they have a um, patented process for putting it onto the Kydex, or into the Kydex, however they, however they do it, which apparently makes it uh, better in a lot of ways, which we'll discover as we go on and make a holster with it. Uh, what we have here are a couple other samples of other uh, camo patterns, um, contemporary camo patterns, not like, uh, you know, the, 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 the digital camo, which is a little dated these days. And uh, if we'll take a look at these guys, both of these are supposed to be some sort of... Uh, uh, representation of the multicam pattern. What we can see on this one immediately is that the color's way off. Um, second of all, the print quality is visibly, uh, um, in my opinion, substandard. I think it'll even pick it up on the camera. You can see some sort of like uh, lines, some horizontal striping from the printing process. Um, and then additionally, it's just way too glossy. And uh, you can see here on the edge, hopefully, that it's an overlay with a white intermediary layer, which actually gives you a white border, which is uh, no good. And I think that also helps with the, uh, contribute to the uh, discoloration. This one is, um, this has a texture that's much more familiar to us from like the, uh, the digital camos, but you can still feel that it's an overlay. The uh, color's more accurate on this one. And keep in mind, these are both not from Index. These are from uh, other, other companies, but, um, the, the sharpness of this image, I think, is a little, leaves something to be lacking. There's definitely some sort of uh, blurring going on here. And then additionally, it's glossy. And finally, on both of these, being an overlay, they will show some sort of stretching and cracking as you form them. I mean, I've had experience with this process, not necessarily this pattern, but the same process from uh, this company. In terms of the digital camo, you can get some cracking as you form it, especially if it has to if conform over like a, a sharp or extreme curve. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a holster with the ATAX and just see how it turns out. I've got some pretty high hopes for it right off the bat. And so uh, we'll take a look at how it heats, how it reacts, whether or not there's any kind of like a discoloration or stretching or deforming as we uh, make the pattern, as we make the holster. We're gonna do it for just a Glock 17 uh, without a light. So uh, that's gonna be our little project for this morning. And uh, we'll show you some updates throughout the process. All right, so while we got some of this material in the oven heating up, getting ready to be formed, we're going to uh, take a minute and do some totally unscientific uh, abrasion testing. And we're going to compare the uh, durability of uh, this uh, infused pattern to these uh, overlaid ones. So we're going to start off with the uh, green-ish multicam. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it on the ground here and uh, move it around with my foot a little bit, simulate some hard use simulate, yeah right, we're just going to beat the crap out of it, see how this looks after a little abuse here, see how that holds up, 
All right, now we're gonna do the uh, uh, slightly better multicam. See how this one looks. Use that. See how this looks. Are we giving this one an equal thrashing? Yeah. Yeah. I got no tracks. All right, that's pretty beat. And now we're gonna take the uh, the ATAX uh, and do the same thing to it. Go a little harder on this one. It's already dead. <laughs> All right. So, I haven't looked at any of these either. Neither of you were going to come over here. We're going to rinse them off so we can get a good idea of what happened to them without the dirt on them. This will be a surprise for everybody. That's cold water. Keep in mind, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. We've never done this before. And I'm keeping them face down, so we'll be just as surprised as you are to see what these guys look like post abuse. So we'll come back over here, over here, and take a peek. You ready? Okay, so here's the first one. Here's that, uh, the green multicam. Let's wipe it down a little bit. And let's see if you can see this, but you can see that the finish is, the, that's, pr that's pretty thrashed, that's pretty rocked. That's uh, not even a whole lot of abuse. That, I wouldn't say that that's a day's worth of groundwork at a class. Uh, and that pattern's pretty gone. And you, you can see that it's coming through kind of white. Let's put it, take it out of the direct light a little bit. Maybe you can see the damage a little bit better. That's pretty well. <laughs> Come, come around over here in the shadow. That's pretty well. That's done. That's uh, that's pretty smoked. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, this guy. And you can see that you can see the uh, darker underlay color is starting to come through here. Pan pan around a little bit. Let's see if we can see some of the the damage on here. This one isn't as bad, but you can see that it, the the uh, it didn't hold up really great to the abrasion. Um, and that's something that I've seen on this process uh, quite a bit. I mean, I've made uh, a few uh, holsters for some local folks with the uh, digital camo, and they'll carry it inside the waistband, and after a couple months, you can see that where it rubs inside the pants, the camo's coming. Up. So that's uh, pretty standard for that. Now, for the big cheese, we'll see how this one turned out. And uh, what you can see is that, Come on, this guy's kind of dirty. You can see that it's got some scrapes and some scratches, but nowhere, it's got some dirt on it too, but nowhere is the actual pattern coming off and like revealing anything underneath it. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's scraped and it's scratched, but let's, let's compare it to these guys. And we'll see if that's actually I mean, I'd say that's, I'd say that's better overall. I mean, in terms of this overall abrasion resistance, I mean, this green stuff is the worst by far. That's done, that's out of the question. This is a little bit better, and I think if you want something that approximates multicam, this is probably gonna be where you go for that. But still, it's the same process that we've been seeing with the uh, digital camo, which eh, isn't my favorite. And additionally, this stuff, you know, even before you start heating it up, 
uh, smells pretty smells pretty wicked, and uh, that's something that I never liked about it. Uh, but this guy, uh, I've got some dirt on here, which should come off. I've got some uh, little scratches and stuff, but the pattern isn't really that beat. I mean, and I think I, I think I went over this guy a little bit harder than the other ones. Uh, so that's our unscientific abrasion test insofar as the uh, whatever process they're using on this ATAX holds up pretty good. Pretty good indeed. So here we are, we're getting towards the end of the heating process on this guy. We are at 341, it's about to come out of the oven. One thing that I've noticed that's really awesome so far is that this doesn't let off that nasty stink the way uh, I've, I've, I've experienced with uh, other, other camos, especially like the overlays, whatever. I don't know exactly what it is they do to get that, that pattern on there, but it smells bad out of the box, and then when you're heating it up, it makes the whole shop stink. Um, and uh, I've been adverse to, to using it for that exact reason. So what I'm looking at here, all right, we're 343. Uh, I don't have time to show you because we're working with the hot material, but I didn't see a color or texture change as we uh, heated it up. We're going with the press. Go in the press. And uh, we'll see how this looks when it comes out. Maybe we're going to give it a little extra heat because sometimes, you know, with the camo pattern, it kind of blurs the definition and uh, kind of hides the gun. So we want to be able to make sure that we're getting a nice, good, crisp image in here. So we're going to clamp this bad boy down. And uh, in a couple minutes, we'll come back and take a look at the uh, results. All right, so this has been in here for a minute. We're going to take it out and uh, check out our results here. I'm going to be just as surprised as you are. So uh, this should be pretty cool. See how this held up. Pardon my sniffles, by the way. It's uh, flu season, and uh, we've been getting our asses pretty well handed to us for a couple months now. That's been fun. How you feeling, Mikey? Uh. Ready? And let's come over here. Well, that looks pretty great. What you can see, if you come over here, where there's like really sharp curves and bends, is that we're not getting any kind of extreme warping or cracking in the pattern, because it's not overlaid. So as the kydex stretches, the material doesn't like fracture and uh, stretch over it. I mean, I'm very impressed by this. The color, let's compare it. There's no like uh, co serious color or uh, uh, texture change. If anything, it's gotten slightly more matte as a result of this uh, process, which is really great. It's, it looks, I mean, it looks like it, I mean, I know it's going to sound weird to say it, but it looks like it came that way, which is really cool. Instead of like, it doesn't look like a, uh, a secondhand or aftermarket kind of process. And uh, I'm pleased with this. This is a really great result. The definition's still really good. It doesn't add, I mean, on these other guys, since you're adding a layer, you're adding thickness to the Kydex. So it's not exactly 0.08. It's, it's going to be like 0.089 or, or 0.087, which makes it... Uh, thicker and so you, you do lose some definition but this being more infused into the kydex rather than overlaid uh, really eliminates a lot of those problems and I think that's a really cool process so uh, we're going to uh, get involved in uh, cutting sanding trimming etc etc and uh, we'll have uh, some uh, footage throughout that process so one thing that I'm very pleased with is that um, they use a lighter colored kydex they use that uh, that like desert sand kind of ivory color for this and um, what I like about that in terms of workability this is generally slightly softer than other colors I don't know what it is maybe it's the pigmentation of the process by which they make it this color and that means that I can buff it without the use of any compound and I don't run the risk of you know that compound kind of like dying or uh, staining the, uh, the, the kydex at all so I can just use a clean wheel on this guy
and get that edge nice and, and bright without getting any kind of like uh, residue on the rest of the, uh, like into the pattern or what have you. So that's, that's a bonus for sure. I don't know, likely not intentional, but that's a pleasant side effect nonetheless. Yeah. So while we're here, what's pretty cool is that in addition to this ATAC sample, we also got a little sample pack of these beautiful coyote eyelets, which we're going to, uh, which we're going to try out here. Uh, apparently they've got some great like enameling or heat treating process for these where it's uh, really uh, hard to chip, chip off the finish when you're setting these. And uh, we're going to give these a shot. I've never used these before. I just opened this package and uh, we're going to give these guys a shot. Oh man, look how good that looks. That is really sexy actually. This is going to be awesome. I'm act I'm really excited. I mean, I thought this was cool at first, but now I'm now I'm pumped. Now I got my juices flowing. <laughs> what are you giggling for, Michael? You guys roll. Well, that's that rolled perfectly. I'm not getting any like uh, serious chipping or gouging on the front or the back. It's looking pretty nice. Looking pretty nice. Let me clean this guy off. It's got a little schmutz in there. What are you What are you snickering at? Here we go. Look, these these ones all came out perfect too. That's uh, that's fantastic. I'm really pleased with that. Let's take a look at uh, the other side. Oh, baby, baby. Let's look at that. All right. So this is our uh, our finished product. You know, even when you uh, fold it to uh, put a contour in it, you don't get any cracking or warping or glossing or, or uh, any surprises. I mean, ultimately, this was exactly like working with a regular sheet of Kydex. Uh, you know, there wasn't any kind of like surprise or compromise or workaround that was necessary. The uh, coyote eyelets, I mean, here, come, come up, uh, come up over here and focus. There we go. This just turned out, I'm very pleased with this overall. Uh, this is the first camo pattern that I've really been happy with uh, in terms of the quality of the pattern, the consistency of the pattern, the way it works, uh, the way it is to work with it and around it in terms of, you know, odors and uh, dealing with uh, uh, finish issues in terms of the, the the pattern changing or the color changing or the texture changing this has just been this has been like a, a regular sheet of kydex and I'm really really happy with that um, these eyelets like we mentioned uh, turned out just perfect I mean I've I expected some sort of like chipping on the finish or some sort of uh, issues with uh, getting them set correctly but they all you know, they were, uh, there's, how many eyelets on here? Twelve? There's twelve eyelets, and it's, uh, uh, they went twelve for twelve. I was very pleased with that. And, uh, overall, I mean, I'm really impressed. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed, indeed. Uh, and it takes a lot to impress me at this point, so take that for whatever it's worth. And, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, this, like, really hitting the market. If you guys want a really quality camo pattern, um, I would definitely go with this. This is the uh, official ATAX camo pattern from uh, Index Fasteners. I'm going to have all their contact information uh, at the bottom, and uh, that's going to be that's going to be that. Man, I'm super impressed. And this thing is this thing is quite beautiful, and I'm happy. I like being happy.